Hi all. So in today's session, we'll be discussing the CAT 2008 preparation strategies. Uh, if any one of you has any doubts or if there is something that you feel should be addressed, you can let me know in the chat or you can let me know at the end of the session as to what all things uh, do you require special attention to. Now, uh, to start with this particular thing. Okay, so what I will be addressing in today's session is essentially three things. Uh, it's not going to be a very long session or a very elaborate session as such. This is basically, uh, this session will basically address how to start with your preparation, what all sources should you be referring to when you are preparing, and what should be the basic timeline overview if you have to uh, design a particular thing right now. So, the first thing is how to start with the preparation. Again, it depends whether you are a fresher or whether you have certain experience with CAT. Uh, sources for preparation, I'll just be covering a bit of material and a few online sources that you might want to go through. And uh, timeline essentially will tell you how to go from uh, a section level awareness to a topic level awareness to a question level awareness. So we will deal with these three levels of awareness when it comes to the timeline overview. So to start with the first thing, how to start with your preparation. Now, again, if you are a fresher and if you haven't taken CAD before, then uh, generally what happens is a lot of times you will come across this hoopla that CAT is a very difficult test. It takes 6, 8, 10 hours of preparation every day. Uh, to get better at it and if you want to be a 99 percentiler then you have to have uh, a, an, a, uh, the kind of aptitude that is uh, meant for only a select few and those kind of things are prevalent. Now the point here is that a lot of people who will dish out this advice would not have been successful at CAT themselves because those of whom are who have done well at CAT then those people will not really be uh, into giving a lot of advice because they will be busy with their colleges and whatnot. So generally people tend to exaggerate these kind of things and uh, of course to put it at a very basic level it involves uh, some content from quantitative ability, some content from verbal ability and a few um, logical reasoning or data interpretation questions here and there. Now essentially you have to show a flair for basic aptitude. Now CAT is conducted in this manner because this is probably the uh, most difficult thing that everyone has access to or it is accessible to everyone or they can test everyone using this particular thing and because this is something that everyone knows but then again there are levels to it. So it becomes very easy for the institutes to filter as to which person has a better aptitude among a given set of individuals and that's why CAT is conducted in this manner in the first place. So that's why you have a splattering of quant and verbal which will deal with core content based questions. So in case of quant you will have algebra, arithmetic, geometry, modern maths, numbers, you will have those kind of things which are content based. Verbal ability and reading comprehension again will be content based and there will be a lot of things that will be present that you can prepare about. But in case of logical reasoning or data interpretation there is very little that you can do. And of course if you would have been reading stories uh, for the past couple of years or so uh, then you would have heard a lot of horror stories if I were to put it that way. When it comes to this particular section because it has been difficult in many ways. So how to tackle this particular section and how exactly to go about solving the test or how exactly to go about preparing for the test is what I will be focusing. So if you are a fresher then the first thing you need to know is as I have said you have to remove that entire thing from your head that cat is a difficult test or there is going to be a lot of um, the, it's going to be a, a very difficult journey you will have to put in a lot of effort you cannot work simultaneously and prepare for cat you cannot prepare for your exams and prepare for cat you will have to let go of all these things. At the end of the day it's an aptitude test if you have basic aptitude, if you have like English and maths as subjects in your school days, I think you should find it very easy to pick up at this point in time. So if you are someone who has taken CAT before, then again, great, you know exactly what it takes. If you would have taken CAT 2017, you would have realized that the maths thing was very easy. As in quantitability was probably the easiest that we had seen over the last many years. Uh, it was probably the easiest section. Um, followed by verbal ability, reading comprehension was very easy, straightforward passages, straightforward questions. Um, it was that easy that people might have been surprised and they would have been looking for uh, certain traps that were not present at all. DILR on the other hand was difficult but that has been the case for the last three years now. So again it is something that can be expected, it was expected and probably again we have to keep that in mind when we are preparing for CAT 18 as well. So that is something that uh, will be true for this year as well. And we are hoping that it becomes easier by a bit, but you never know. So we have to prepare, keeping in mind the worst possible situation. And that's how your preparation starts. So if you are at whatever level, let's say, and if you feel that you your basics are not really great, 
or if you have no idea as to what all things come under quant or what all things come under lr or what all things come under verbal then you can start with these things that i have mentioned here so if you are not really great at maths as is the complaint with a lot of people or a lot of people feel that they are not good at maths because of two reasons particularly one is there is so much of syllabus to cover that it's practically impossible to know each and every concept from maths irrespective of whatever material you are studying from irrespective of whatever preparation you are uh, you are undergoing it's almost impossible to predict with certainty that you will score 100 100 out of 100 or 102 out of 102 in the present context in quantitative ability so a lot of people are scared of that fact because there is too much of ground to cover even in the sessions if you look at it around 60 50 to 60 percent of the sessions will be based on quantitative ability so that is the amount of or that is the volume of a preparation that is required when it comes to quantitative ability so if you are not good at it then that could be one of the reasons that you are scared of quantitative ability the other thing is that a lot of people do not really have or are not really in touch with basic quantitative ability once they are done with their 10th standard exam so uh, after your 10th standard exams were done you were not really in touch with probability geometry and algebra these are the ones that are consistent from your 10th standard numbers on the other hand is something that you would have been learning since you were uh, since the first time you entered school right the first thing you did you learned a number or you figured out which numbers were odd which numbers were even it starts right from there and it goes on till an extremely advanced euler's theorem or a chinese remainder theorem and so on but algebra geometry and modern maths are something that you would have learned in your at least till your 10th standard and for people who are into engineering or who have a mathematical background they would have done it till that 12th standard but again after that it would have been a good gap of 2 3 4 5 years that you would have not seen it in uh, in a theoretical capacity and so it becomes very difficult for you to know whether you are good or bad at that particular thing so again that's why people are generally scared of quant uh, if you are someone who falls into either of these categories and you feel that it's going to be a very difficult journey then you have to brace yourself you have to start with basic ncert textbooks so all the ncert textbooks for 8th standard 9th standard 10th standard are there on our website you can simply download them and you can have a look at it or uh, just make sure that you are respecting that particular textbook and you are respecting the uh, theory that is present there uh, it should not really happen that you feel that it's a very easy concept and so you are letting go of it so uh, you have to let go of your ego especially if you are scared of maths especially if you feel that you will not really be able to do well at quant uh, you have to be you have to let go of your ego and you have to be extremely uh, receptive to any kind of knowledge that you can get especially from these topics So, if you are looking at NCERT textbooks, always make sure that you are looking at arithmetic, geometry, and algebra. Now, which topics to look at? I will be covering in the next slide. But these are the topics that you need to pay particular attention to because arithmetic has contributed to around 35 to 40 percent of the entire paper last year. Algebra was again a good 15, 20 percent of the entire paper. Geometry would again be some 15 or percent. So, if you take care of these three things, you are roughly looking at somewhere around 50 to 60 percent of your score from these three areas. and if you go to the question papers that were floated by the cat uh, examination authorities the cat conducting authorities then you will see that a lot of these questions were from fairly basic uh, level and if you knew the concepts or if you know how the concepts or if you knew rather how the concepts came into existence you would have been able to solve it completely so you have to pay attention to these kind of things and for those things ncert textbooks would be a good starting point if you have no clue about quant if you are not really great at maths then that would be a brilliant starting point and you can start right away so i would advise you to start as soon as possible don't wait for that divine intervention or that kick uh, that you would get once you take your first mock that will be a bit too late in my opinion so it's always better to start right away with ncert textbooks irrespective of whatever you are doing right if you are not great at quant start with ncert textbooks for logical reasoning data interpretation if again if you are scared and if you have read a lot of horror stories with regard to last year's test again trust me it was not that difficult to be very flat uh, and of course it's a relative test right end of the day you don't you are not required to get 70% in a paper you have to perform better than 90% of the individuals or 95% of the individuals or 99% of the individuals depending on what you are targeting but to be very frank last year's paper was not that difficult that you would not have been able to solve nine questions it was not that difficult so last year's paper nine questions would have translated into a good 90% Twenty-seven marks would have been a good ninety percent, like easy, and uh, that is the kind of thing that we are looking at. So, if you are solving nine questions in a difficult LRDI section, 
then I think it's it's more or less like two sets and one question from another set. And even if you look at the morning slot paper or the afternoon slot paper, you will be able to find these three sets in a very easy manner. So if you particularly the morning slot, which is the one that I had taken it in, uh, if you look at the paper, then the fries and ice cream and burger set was very easy. It was extremely straightforward. If you would have simply looked at it and if you would have figured it out, I think it was it was that easy. You may not even have to do anything else. It was basic observation, writing down the data that you had. If you would have written it down in a good manner, then you would have figured it out easy. The second thing was basically uh, on the uh, entire set regarding um, the mothers and the children and what kind of uh, schools that they are getting into government versus non-government and private and all those type of things. So that was again an easy set if you could spot it. There were a couple of easy questions. There was another set that had that grid, 5 by 5 grid wherein there were people who were standing and there were numbers that were given and you had to reach one number from the other. So that was again an easy set. Now if someone had solved these three sets and would have got 36 out of 96 in that particular section, then that would have easily translated into a score of around 97 to 98 percentile in that particular test. So that, that was kind of the magnitude that we're looking at. Now, if I'm saying 27, it is at 90 percentile. If I'm saying 36, it is at a good 96, 97 percentile at least. So we are looking at a big jump if you are solving two or three extra questions. Now, you have to keep in mind that we are solving three sets. Genuinely, we are solving three sets confidently. And if you solve three sets in any paper, irrespective of the level of difficulty of the paper, you will do extremely well, is what I'm sure about. Because a lot of people have that phobia in their heads that DILR is going to be difficult. So if you are a beginner, if you have no clue as to what exactly to expect, I would strongly suggest that you target three sets, solve three sets confidently, and only once you are good at solving three sets in say 40 minutes, and you have 20 minutes left at the end, will you get into solving the fourth set. So that is the kind of attitude that we are looking at when it comes to LRDI section. If you are someone who is not really good at reasoning and if you are not really good at jumping from one statement to the other or making sense of a set of data or a bunch of data points that you have, then I would again suggest that you go through these resources that I have mentioned. So George Summers' book of puzzles and teasers is a very short book. I think there are around 120 puzzles in that book. Uh, the puzzles are very short. Half a page is what they take. But then they are extremely uh, taxing. They have a lot of sub cases. There are a lot of situations that you have to handle. And um, I think it becomes irritating after a point in time. So I would suggest that you go through that book and till the time you get irritated, you at least practice those things because it will build a good habit of making cases. Uh, because if anything has been clear over the last two or three years, it has been that if you can make cases, if you can go through all possible cases and use the MECE, mutually exclusive, cumulatively exhaustive, as I would have mentioned in the other videos as well, uh, you should be able to deal with those questions in a good manner. Past care papers, again, there are a lot of questions with brilliant logic that are still viable. Um, so the one, especially the ones that I can remember at the top of my mind, the one involving ERDOS number, there was very little calculation that had to be done. But if you look at this set and if you figure out how exactly that ERDOS number is getting transferred or how it increases from one step to the other, then you would have probably covered a lot of sets wherein there is uh, some amount of chronology involved. If you look at the Naya Mixer Grinder versus Purana Mixer Grinder set, if, I think if I'm not wrong, uh, it was 2004, I think. Uh, that, that's, why, that's when it appeared. Or maybe one of 2003 or 2005. So that again was a beautiful set on overlapping data points. So a few of the mixers are discarded after two years. So every two years, you will be discarding 80% of the mixers that were there, uh, that were introduced two years before. So how to deal with those kind of overlaps? Again, a brilliant set. Again, if you look at the three people investing in the stock market, I think it was 2007, if I'm not wrong, or 2008. Um, so, Abdul, Bikram and Chandra, I think, if I'm not wrong with their names. Uh, uh, with their names. So, that was again a good set which involved making a lot of cases. Um, the way in which a thief travels across Europe by stealing some 10,000 pounds or 20,000 pounds. Again, it was a brilliant question. And uh, it would have been really good if you go through these questions. And if you solve the past cat or zat papers, I think you will come across a lot of beautiful questions that were present, which involved a lot of varying logic, right from critical path to points and sticks games, to complex arrangements, to simple linear arrangements, um, to again, logical condition, logical grouping, uh, logical conditions, uh, grouping of data that has been given to you, syllogisms, you'll come across all these kind of uh, question types that you can get.
so past cat papers is probably the best source that you can have again if you again don't really have a logical bent of mind i would strongly suggest going through something like a sudoku kakuro hitori hidato bulsan kaus all these kind of things you can solve at least one thing every day if you have an app you can always make it a point to solve a sudoku puzzle every day at, at least a medium uh, level of difficulty or probably um, slightly difficult sudoku puzzles once you get better at it you can always make it a point to solve one of each or one of two or three whatever is whatever you are comfortable with and uh, i think with time you will get better at this so last year if i remember correctly there was one di set that was uh, that could have been cracked using the kakuro logic so uh, three people have three different ratings and the ratings add up to seven so there is only one way in which you can split it four plus two plus one similarly we had some 17 or 18 that had to be split into three, three things but uh, the number of sixes were not present or the number of fives was not present at all so it would have been a really good idea to go through kakuro and if you were able to break down those numbers into those three parts it would have saved you a lot of time so because i knew that thing i could probably crack that particular set or at least a couple of questions from that set and that is probably what we are looking at all these minor things here and there that you do will add up to something large at the end of the day so however silly it sounds however stupid it sounds that you have to solve a sudoku kakuro hitori or whatever uh, take it a bit seriously especially if you are not good at it if you are good at it then i don't think you will be watching this video or you will be going through this thing but if you are good at, if you are not really great at it then i would definitely suggest that you start with these things at least pulse and cows is again a brilliant game and uh, again it might not really have direct applications but it will help you think if you write down one thing then it will help you think as to how to use that bit of information to write the other thing. because a lot of time we have that attitude that let's write this thing somewhere and let's see how it goes if it matches then great if it doesn't match then we will move on to the next question that kind of thinking does not really help a lot when it comes to cat and especially how it has been for the last couple of years now or last 3 years now i don't think that that kind of uh, thought process will take you anywhere so again strongly advise that you go through these things at least uh, solve one of each or solve one on every day so solve sudoku on monday kakuro on tuesday one hitori puzzle on wednesday and so on a lot of websites are there a lot of online resources are there that will provide you with uh sets or will provide you with um uh, puzzles that that you can sit and solve and it will not take more than 10 or 15 minutes max once you figure out what exactly has to be done so it's a very small investment um and it will benefit you a lot at the end of the day but make sure that you are not getting carried away and you are not doing solving only sudoku puzzles because uh, i understand that after a point in time it becomes kind of addicting yeah or um you might want to solve these more than the puzzles that you get so don't get carried away just make sure that you are doing it till the time you get better at logically connecting a lot of things that are present verbal ability again if you are not very clear with whatever is there in verbal ability start with a bit of critical reasoning from gmat lsat material if you are a, if you are a beginner then start with lower level gmat questions 500 600 questions are like or 500 600 level questions are a good way to start critical reasoning understand what assumptions are what inferences are what conclusions are how to strengthen an argument how to weaken an argument how to identify an argument so that is the starting point of critical reasoning if you understand these things then with a solid logical base you should be able to apply the uh, concepts that you will be studying as well grammar not especially true for cat or it has not been true for cat for the last 3 years now things might change this year but we don't know that again but snap ift nmat zat will test your grammatical skills and so if you are not very good at grammar or if you have no clue about what grammar looks like you can always start referring to gmat sentence correction guides of course the online course will help but if you want something in addition to that or if you want uh, something in front of you that you can sit and read you can always go for gmat sentence correction guides that are available either the og or the marathon guide will be fine if you can go for it then brilliant uh, para jumbles para completion para summary again now the problem with these kind of questions is that if you come across these questions in your mocks as well i would be very blunt at this point in time and i would say that a lot of these questions are uh, downright stupid and they don't really deserve a lot of attention to be very frank uh, because if you take any paragraph from any source that you have you jumble it up and you present it in the form of a para jumbles question it might not really be the best way to do it and you might not really be able to learn a lot from that particular endeavor so again i would suggest that Uh, we don't really get into these kind of things uh, if para para jumbles para completion para summary uh, those kind of questions you are not really reliant on mocks but 
you are reliant on past care papers if you get past care papers if you can get these kind of things from there and if you are if you have gone through the videos that we have done for para jumbles para completion para summary i think you should have a strong hold on these question types at least whenever there are technically they are technically feasible if it is a random question from a random source then there is little that you can do and i don't think that will differentiate between you and a, a not so good aspirant so that is that is the thing that that you have to consider especially in case of pjs pcs and pss so once you are done with that then i think uh, you should be fine uh, when it comes to reading comprehension questions gmat or lsat passages old cat papers so if you are a beginner absolute beginner you can start with old cat papers and uh, you can simply look at the kind of passages that you get now of course the kind of passages that we get have become a bit more interesting over the last couple of years they have become shorter more crisp so it's not very difficult to read it's not very difficult to comprehend as well and the questions are also pretty straightforward so out of 24 questions that we have been getting in reading comprehension uh, there would be around 17 or 18 questions that you can solve by simply reading the passage well and simply eliminating the options that you have so it becomes very easy that way uh, do not really rely on eliminating options all the time because a lot of time we see that uh, verbal ability and reading comprehension are more of eliminating options than anything else and it does not really work that way always uh, you have to have an opinion right so you cannot really be dependent on options to deal with questions from quant and lr you solve those things similarly verbal ability and reading comprehension is something that uh, you will have to sit and solve and once you solve that thing once you figure out an answer in your head only then will you look at the options and you will then see if your options matches with your thought process and that's how you will answer these questions uh, of course as you go ahead you will be able to grasp it in a better manner and then you can skip one or two steps but if you are an absolute beginner i would strongly suggest that you for you uh, have an answer in your head and only then you look at the options that you so that's how you can start with the preparation by referring to these things that i have done all right so that's how you will generally start with your preparation if you are a beginner or if you are someone who has had a bit of experience now there are these important topics that uh, you should ideally cover before the end of june in some capacity so uh, typically if you are looking at verbal ability then we are essentially looking at reading comprehension so again it's it's very difficult to complete reading comprehension uh, no one in their uh, in the right frame of mind will tell you that they have finished reading comprehension completely um, but reading comprehension you have to understand what strategy works for you the best is it better for you to read the passage first understand the passage then look at the questions and then solve it or is it better if you look at the questions then look at the passage then you solve it so there is no one size fits all kind of strategy here it completely depends on you <coughs> uh, particularly if, if uh, you are let's say uh, my kind of a candidate uh, so i am extremely impatient i am not very uh, i am not very patient as such uh, to be very frank so uh, i am very fidgety when it comes to sitting at one place for a long amount of time not doing anything uh, so generally what i tend to do is i will tend to read the passage extremely quickly then i will go to the questions and make sense of it come back to the relevant part and again read read whatever i had done earlier now i can afford to do this because i have a good reading speed if you are someone who is patient who wants to have all the information in front of you before you make a decision then always it's better if you read the passage carefully then you go to the questions and then you solve those questions without going back to the passage so again it it's completely up to you what kind of an individual you are what is your style of solving questions and uh, again you have to take a call yourself after you solve a few questions it will be it will be kind of obvious that uh, that is a particular strategy that you have to follow so again reading comprehension if you know from that if you know it at that level then great grammar basics again there are some seven or eight things that you need to know in grammar parallelism subject verb agreement and tenses are the ones that are the most important or the most frequently occurring in addition to this you will always have dangling modifiers uh, you will always have uh, the style of writing a statement voices in which you are writing a statement basic phrases and idioms that you need to be careful about so there will be a lot of things but parallelism if you can understand so there have to be two sets or two phrases or two clauses that have the uh, same way of expressing themselves so um, someone is walking and eating uh, so you cannot say someone is walking and has eaten you cannot say that so that this is a very basic example but things go a bit deeper than this subject of agreement 
your verb has to agree with the number of subject or subjects that you have so if you have a singular subject there should be a singular verb if you have a plural subject you should have a plural verb that's about it tenses again there should be tenses that should be consistent throughout again i as i had explained um, grammar is not something that you need to worry about when it comes to cat but of course and mat snap ift zat you will have to have basic grammar in place if you have if you are taking those exams and so it's a good idea to understand at least the top two or three things that um, that are present in almost all the grammar based questions para jumbles you should be good at finding out links how do you get a link so whenever you get an article so the general or whatever the committee was formed so which committee was formed or what exactly was this committee about so that will refer to something in the previous slide so you should have a previous slide that will address this particular concern so that is generally how you form links pronouns very easy to figure out so if you have a question or if you have uh, if you have a statement that starts with uh, he was a great cricketer and he won india two world cups then who was he or what is that he referring to and if someone it says that uh, we are talking about mahendra singh dhoni then of course that gives you the relationship between the noun and the pronoun chronology again whenever you have timelines so something happened in the 30s then in the 60s and 70s there was more research nowadays the scientists are focusing on certain things so you will have a line of thought right 30s 60s 70s and today so that is how the chronology will work so of course if you remember these two or three things and if you solve questions using this bit of information then i think it should be fairly clear when it comes to para jumbles at least critical reasoning again as i said assumptions inference conclusion and what exactly is an argument or how exactly is an argument form so there are again a couple of things that you need to know uh, if p then q you can only conclude if not q then not q. so again i have discussed this in the logical conditions thing um again you cannot really get confused between correlation and causation so if two things occur together does not mean that one thing is caused because of the other so again there are one or two concepts that you need to be uh, as in you need to have uh, have it clear so that you become better at critical reasoning but again this is kind of an acceptable level if you know what exactly or how do you separate an assumption from an inference and a conclusion and if you figure out these things then i think you should be good to go quantitative ability again i have mentioned uh, a few basic things that you need to know by the end of june i think you should be clear with these things so arithmetic of course all the arithmetic topics that you have plus time speed distance time and work you should be good at those things algebra at least you should be good with linear and quadratic equations i'm not talking about functions graphs polynomials logarithms i'm not talking about um, algebra from that perspective amg mhm series so those things you can probably uh, keep it for the end or keep it for later but at least you should be good with linear and quadratic equations if you get a linear equation or a set of linear equations what is the best way to solve it if you get an inequality that is based on a linear equation what is the best way to solve it if you get a quadratic equation based question then what is the best way to solve it sum of roots product of roots factorization so if you are good with those things then algebra you should be able to manage most of algebra geometry again triangles quadrilateral circles and mensuration you should be fine uh, you need not really get into the depth of coordinate geometry trigonometry um, or even intensive topics from circles and triangles so there are a few topics in circles uh, let's say something like a, a cyclic quadrilateral or let's say something like a brahmagupta's theorem or um, Uh, it could be any ptolemy's uh, formula so if you have those kind of things you need not really get into those kind of things uh, it's okay if you know the basics of triangles similarity congruence area perimeter the relationship between the longest side and the perimeter and so on so if you know those things in triangles quadrilaterals if you know the basic uh, quadrilaterals that are present with a special emphasis on trapezium then you should be good to go circles again if you are clear with the angles arcs and the sectors that you have uh, and the chords of course then it should you should be good to so basically if you know a bit of geometry if you know the uh, formulas and if you know the basic questions that can arise i think you should be good to go numbers lcm hcf is fairly important and basics of number theory so when i say basics of number theory any question that involves numbers and a bit of algebra so essentially um, what is the smallest number that has exactly 12 factors what is the smallest number that has exactly uh, i don't know eight factors and so on or um, what is if abc is a number such that 
ABC is written as A factorial plus B factorial plus C factorial. Then what is the value of B? How many four digit perfect squares exist that are of the nature A, A, B, B? So all these are cat questions that I am uh, I'm trying to explain. Modern maths, you need not get into uh, the extensive permutations and combinations concepts that we have, right? So we have uh, something known as dividing objects, similar objects into similar groups, similar into distinct, distinct into similar, distinct into distinct. So we have videos on all four of these, but you need not really get into it right at the beginning of your prep. At the beginning of your prep, I think linear and circular arrangements, if you are good at those things, with and without conditions, brilliant. With and without repetition, brilliant. Selections is basic question, right? There are five girls and four boys that are present. Uh, there is a party that has to be held. Um, in how many ways can you call four people to the party such that there is at least one girl that is invited? So all those kind of questions. Probability again, basic probability, which is dependent on arrangements and selections. So again, you have to be clear with these kind of concepts. Basics of points, dice, cards won't hurt much. Um, so you can know those things. But again, if you know these things, I don't see any reason that you should not really hit a 50 or 60 percent in quantitative ability. I'm talking about percentage, not percentile. So if you're hitting 60, 100, then uh, even if the paper is extremely easy like that of last year's, I don't think there is any reason that you should not score a 90 percentile in that section, uh, which which is again which, which is something that looks very low at this point in time. But uh, you might realize the value of it probably as we reach at a later stage or at a later point in time. Uh, from a logical reasoning and data interpretation perspective, critical path is something that was tested extensively last year. So uh, across lots, there were at least three sets that I could spot that involved critical path. A uh, critical path is essentially how many ways are there to do a particular thing and which is the optimum way of doing that particular thing. So we had that uh, set on burgers, ice cream and price. That was a classic critical path question. Uh, we also had 10 cities that are present in a, uh, there are 10 cities that are present and they are connected through airlines. Uh, again, that was something that was a critical path based question. So we had two or three sets that were based on core critical path principles. So make sure that you know how to approach critical path questions or uh, you know that it is a critical path question. Linear arrangements, complex arrangements, fairly straightforward. It has, as in these have been the bread and butter of aptitude tests over the last many years now. So you can go through these concepts uh, and you should know ideally when to solve a question, when to not solve a question, uh, what all things to consider at the beginning, what is the best way to solve arrangement based questions and so on. When it comes to DI, tables, graphs, again bread and butter of uh, almost every aptitude test that you will come across, have to go through these questions. Logical puzzles is again tricky business because um, most of the time it will happen that you would have not seen these puzzles. You would have not seen that particular logic that is being applied. So you might not really be comfortable with that particular question. But uh, again, if you go through a lot of logical puzzles and if you keep everything in your head, then by the end of the year or by the end, by the time you take CAT, you would have a nice database of all the different kinds of logic that you can get when it comes, especially when it comes to logical puzzles. So make sure that you come across a lot of logical puzzles based questions. Logical puzzles based questions will basically involve some, um, some gameplay. There'll be a certain set of rules that will be given to you and those rules will be followed in some way or the other. So uh, last year there was a good set on chess uh, in the afternoon slot. So there are uh, some four queens to be placed or there are some seven queens to be placed in how many ways can, or how we, where will you place these queens so that they are not really uh, in line with each other on uh, or they are not really being connected over a diagonal or a row or a column. So those kind of questions were there, which is a logical puzzles based question. Uh, you might have something like sticks and coins games, which is again a logical puzzles based question. Uh, you can always have numerical logic kind of questions wherein uh, there are four people playing a game and after each round uh, or after the first round, A doubled the coins with B, C and D. After the second round, B doubles the, doubled the coins with A, C and D and so on. After the fourth round, everyone had 24 coins each, something on those lines. So you can always have those kind of questions. Uh, someone went to the temple uh, with a certain number of flowers. She offered half the number of flowers she had plus one extra flower. She went to a second temple, again half the number of flowers plus one flower and so on. So again, these are kind of gameplay based questions wherein you will have to strictly follow the order that has been given there or you will have to strictly follow the rules that have been mentioned in that particular case. Thing. 
so again it is advisable that you go through a lot of question types a lot of questions on this area because uh, you should not really uh, be in that situation wherein it's a very straightforward concept but simply because you haven't come across it earlier uh, where you're not able to solve that question so it should not really happen so this is the kind of uh, important topics this is the kind of uh, most basic preparation that you have to do if you are a cat aspirant uh, and ideally this should be done till the end of june so end of june simply because once july starts your mocks will start in full flow at the end of july you will have your cat notification so once your cat notification comes out you should be in that frame of mind uh, that your preparation is in place now you have to only deal with the strategy part of it so that's why it's advisable that you cover it till the end of june because whatever else you have you will be able to cover it by the end of july or august and then you can focus almost exclusively on mock taking and strategy so so preparation again i think uh, it has been beaten to death and uh, again not really something which uh, a lot of you are not aware of but uh, quantitative ability either of arun sharma nishit sinha any other textbook that you know of or it's good uh, sarvesh sharma is fairly popular so uh, I, i don't know as in you can refer to any one of these books uh, personally i did not refer to any book Uh, i went through a lot of forums um, forum posts something like a pagal guy let's say it used to be a bit organized i'm not sure how it is going right now but it used to be a lot more organized earlier um so that kind of helps facebook groups they have a lot of questions we have our facebook group so we will be sharing a lot of questions once the season starts in full flow um so these are your good sources of quantitative ability uh, 15 to 20 questions good questions not Uh, not those stupid questions that you get right six plus sixty six plus six 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 into five plus fifty five whatever those kind of questions, uh, which uh, only two percent of IAS aspirants are able to solve. Uh, those kind of questions are not really quality cat questions. Uh, if you are able to solve fifteen twenty cat level questions every day, then it will be brilliant because considering that you have a good two hundred to fifty days left, two thirty to forty days left uh, for cat this year, uh, we are positively looking at a good four thousand five thousand questions. till the end of it if you persist and again that is kind of the major thing that separates the good candidate from the bad candidate or the good candidate from the not so good candidate uh, persistence right every people make plans people start with a bang but uh, after two weeks or three weeks they kind of it fizzles out so uh, it does not really make a lot of sense so if you are consistently preparing 15 20 questions every day although on the face of it, it might look like a very small amount of thing to do or it, it might look like a very uh, i don't know insignificant bit but at the end of it it will add up to something really great um similarly lrdi the cat or zat sets past mock sets lrdi of the day is something that i ran last year so it's there on our youtube channel we saw some 49 sets of course if you are a part of our online course then you'll be adding to those sets so by the end of it we should have a good 100 sets i think i hope uh, that should be ready uh, so target solving at least one set every day 200 to 50 sets will be brilliant till the end of it um again i am not saying that it will guarantee that you get 8 out of 8 or 8 set out of 8 in lrdi but it will at least make your journey a bit easier uh, you will not really struggle with those 8 sets that you have you will be able to solve three or four sets at least which will take you some place nice reading comprehension cat passages again as i said will be a good source the good thing is the cat passages are really interesting sorted the questions are good the bad thing is not a lot of questions come with solutions so Uh, you have to take it with a bit, bit of, with a pinch of salt. Uh, if you are not very happy with the solution, you have to let go of that thing, and you have to understand that, uh, of course, as in, um, the solution might be wrong. LCAT or GMAT, on the other hand, the questions will be difficult. Uh, you will have a lot of difficult questions. Last year we ran a series which had in which we solved some fifty-one uh, reading comprehension passages. So you can target one passage per day. If you are, uh, if you want to go through that thing, you can always go to a Facebook. a group and you can search for rc of the day i have hashtagged it so you can go to those passages that we had shared last year good passages with good questions and good solutions at the end of the day so the thing with lsat and gmat is that you will get brilliant solutions you will know why exactly option a is not the answer and option b is the answer so if you are someone who faces that difficulty and you all you always come out at and you always pick the shortest take as people say right there were two options left and i chose the wrong one so uh, and that is what always happens so if you want to eliminate that bit then you can always go to the explanations that you have from lsat and gmat material again a lot of it is freely available online so you can just search around for a bit and you will get a lot of good sources verbal ability old cat papers again as i said para jumpers para completion 
uh, paragraph summary old cat papers are probably your best sources or your best source gmat material or forums especially for critical reasoning and grammar sentence correction you will get a lot of uh, questions from your gmat material or gmat forum so gmat club beat the gmat are pretty popular pretty they cover things extensively so you will get a lot of questions you can sort it in terms of tags so once you go through it once or twice i think you should be able to figure out how to filter those questions and how to get a relevant questions if you solve some 10 questions every day again it looks like a very insignificant thing but it it play pays a lot at the end of the day so again if you are solving 30 40 questions religiously per day till november ideally you should be you should end up solving 6 to 7000 as if this is kind of a uh, as in a conservative estimate right you will be solving a lot more than this considering that you will be solving mocks as well in addition to this you will definitely hit somewhere around 8000 10000 questions which is kind of a very good number and your best aspirants will probably be solving at least these amount of questions these amount of good questions not 100 questions on averages that does not really count as prep so uh, if you stick to this particular thing if you hit 6000 7000 i think the chances of you doing well in the test are significantly better going on to the last thing timeline overview and the preparation milestones uh, again i am not really covering this in detail because we will have sessions almost every week or once every 10 days or so from now so that way i think we will be covering it at we will be covering it frequently and so i am not really getting into mock analysis and what exactly should happen but i am giving you an overview uh, that these are the points or you should be probably present somewhere here at this point in time so by june and if you are looking at it then again as i said you should wrap up the basics across sections whatever table that we saw uh, on the previous couple of slides or couple of slides back uh, you should finish off those topics at least understand your strengths weaknesses at a topic level so uh, generally when you are starting with the preparation right now you are starting at a section level so if i ask you which section are you good at or which section are you not so good at you will probably end up saying that i am good at maths but i am not really good at english which is a completely acceptable answer at this point in time but if you tell me that you are not good at maths in september then there is very little that that can be done at that point in time. Uh, so it, you have to understand it very quickly as to what are the topics that you are not great at now it cannot happen that you are not good at english or you are not good at verbal ability across topics it it will not happen or it will not be that way it might happen that you are not great at para jumbles but you are good with reading comprehension passages you are good with a uh, good content based or direct fact based questions if you are not so good at abstract questions or inference based questions that is again an acceptable level to be at so you should know at topic level uh, at a topic level as to if you are good at a particular topic or not so good at a particular topic uh, so that is something that you have to look at by august and ideally you should have taken seven eight mocks at least and again you should have a good command at what which topics are you comfortable solving during the mock test which topics you are you don't really do well so again i'll come to the mock analysis part a bit later i have already written a, an extensive article on that so you can check that out uh, but i'll be doing a video on mock analysis as well so that will come a bit later um, sometime at the end of may also um but by the end of august you should have taken seven or eight mocks at least uh, by october end again you should know at a question level so as we saw here you start from a section level strength weakness thing you will reach a topic level strength weakness thing and finally by end of october where you have like one month to go for cat or around 30 40 days to go for cat at that point in time you should know at a question level because one month to cat there is very little that you can gain in that last one month it rarely happens that you will read a concept for the first time 30 days before cat and that same concept uh, you will gain uh, or you will become uh, very efficient at applying that particular concept it does not really happen that frequently so your theory part or your content part will end around one month before cat uh, anything after that you may or may not remember so it, it's kind of an iffy uh, situation to be in but by the end of october you should ideally know at a question level so if you you should ideally be able to make sense of a question which topic is it from what is the potential time taken to solve that particular question what is the level of difficulty what is the starting point for that particular question so if you have a question that asks you Uh, what is the smallest number that has exactly eight factors now the starting point there will essentially be to split eight as either eight into one or four into two if you understand that these are the only two points from where you will start that particular question you can apply that same logic to any other question 
of a similar nature. So what is the smallest number that has exactly 10 factors? Again, you know that you can split 10 as 5 into 2 or 10 into 1. Now 10 into 1 is probably not the answer. So you will go for 5 into 2. And essentially you will go for 2 raised to 4 into 3. And that way you will be able to solve that particular question. Um, so with practice, I think you will be able to do that very well. And by October end, you should ideally reach at that level wherein you can start a question without hesitation. Because a lot of people read the question, then they did not, do not understand it, then they read the question again, they still can't understand it, then they feel sad for a moment and they, then they move on to the next question. And it takes a lot of time. In that amount of time, which is a good 1 minute or 1 minute 15 seconds or so, a good candidate would have already solved another question. So that person will have a plus 3 advantage on you. And if that happens for even 5, 6, 7, 8 questions, you are a good 20, 25 marks behind a good candidate. And again, the remaining questions you have to perform really well if you want to beat that other candidate. So it becomes a very difficult journey if you, if you are not really quick. So when I say quick, it does not really mean that you should know all the shortcuts. It means that you should be able to make that decision very well, uh, very uh, quickly. Now, whether you want to solve a particular question or not. And again, once you are... Once you're done with um, your question level thing, ideally it is better that you start with two mocks per week or three mocks per week till the very end. So at the end of it, you are looking at a good 8,000 to 10,000 quality questions, including mocks. And around 30 mocks is something that you should ideally target. So if you are uh, someone who has started your preparation, this is kind of the path that it is going to take. And uh, if you are reaching these milestones at these points in time, then I think you are doing pretty well uh, at that point in time. All right. All right. So, uh, as there are no questions, I will close the session. And uh, again, this was basically an overview of what all things you should have done or you should be doing from now till the time you go approach CAT. If you have any doubts, you can either put it down in the comments or you can reach out to us, and uh, one of us will definitely get in touch with you with regard to those queries. Thanks for attending the session.